So this is the story of my Madrid fiasco and how it managed to turn around, but it took a little bit to get there. So I was in Copenhagen for Copenhagen Fashion Week and because I was in Europe, I decided I would bounce over to Madrid because I wanted to scope out a different part of Spain because I had been to Barcelona before, I loved it, and I was thinking about moving to Spain. So I wanted to check out Madrid. I had booked an Airbnb. I get in at night. I had already had plans to see someone. Well, this Airbnb was already kind of weird because there was a third party in between, which seems to be the norm now with Airbnb, which is not my favorite. And I'm there for maybe 30 minutes. I'm just there to put my stuff away, get ready really quick because I was meeting up with someone and she was going to take me around and take me to some spots to eat and we were going to go drinking and stuff. So she comes to pick me up as soon as she does the power shuts off. And she came up and we flipped back on, we flipped on all of the switches and the power turned back on and we're like, okay, I guess it's fine. Um, I come back at night the power is off again. I flip back on the the power switches or whatever it is, the box. The power comes back on, but it shuts off again after like five or 10 minutes. And so my first night there, I don't have Wi-Fi, I don't have heat, I don't have electricity. Um, I was walking around using the flashlight on my phone. To, just to go to the bathroom. It was cold, it was loud, because it was like a weekend. Everyone's just outside partying, and I'm just like so sad <laughs> that I don't have internet. I can't charge my phone, or I can, but just in like five, 10 minute increments. I text the third party people, their office, or whatever it is, is closed, because it was pretty late at night. I message them again in the morning, and they're like, someone's gonna come by at 11 to come check out the electricity power situation. This guy comes in, he, it, he flips on all the switches, which is what I've been doing. Power's back on, it's on for maybe like 20 minutes, where I'm just kind of waiting around. And I was like, do you think it's good? And he was like, yeah, I think it's good. As soon as he starts to walk out, the power shuts back off. So he starts calling people and he's speaking Spanish. I don't understand what he's saying because my Spanish lessons, uh, you know, hadn't really kicked in yet. After maybe like 15 minutes of him being on and off the phone, flipping on and off the switches, he's like, okay, I have to go. And I'm like, wait, what? I was like, please do not leave me here. And he was like, I don't speak English. And I was like, oh my God, don't go. I was like, is somebody coming for me? Is someone gonna fix the electricity? Like, am I waiting here for someone to come? And he leaves. And I get a phone call and it's from one of the, um, one of the people I was in contact with for the Airbnb. And he's like, hey, they weren't able to fix the electricity. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I told you I'd been like, flipping it on and off, you know, all last night and all this morning and it's just not working. And he was like, well, we're not gonna be able to get a, an electrician over the weekend. It'll probably be like two or three days and we need to take the listing off Airbnb and um, we need you to get out as soon as possible so we can take the listing down. I had brought this like shopping bag. It was a carry-on bag that I brought with me because I had too much stuff from Copenhagen, just like extra clothes and stuff. Um, and by the time I had gotten to the Airbnb in Madrid, the bag had broken from the bottom. It was just you know, it was like a regular shopping bag. I'm freaking out because I need to find, <laughs> I need to find packing tape or something to mend the bag so I can leave as quickly as possible. So I go downstairs, I'm walking around the streets of Madrid, I'm crying. I am so upset, I don't know what to do. I I managed to find a like stationery store and I was, I'm trying to ask for tape, she doesn't understand me. I asked for a bag, cause I was like, maybe I should just get a bag instead of looking for tape. She said, no, you can't have a bag. I'm like, great. So I text the people from the Airbnb. 
thing and I was like, can you help me find like a packing store or something? They find me one, I go there, I get packing tape. I go upstairs and now I have to find a place to stay while doing it in like five, 10 minute in increments because I didn't have, you know, I could only connect, be connected to Wi-Fi for a certain amount of time at a time. People just started waking up in New York, so my friends were sending me stuff. My friend Jasmine, she was sending me hotels and things that would work. I'm texting my friend in Paris, friend from Japan. She's trying to connect me with people she knew in Spain. And it took me so long to finally find a place because of me having to like turn the power back on and it has to boot back up and then I have to like frantically find something. I find a hotel kind of nearby, I book it, I grab all my stuff, I get to the hotel, it was maybe like a 10 minute walk, and you know, it's Spain, it's cobblestone streets, I'm lugging a bunch of stuff around, and there's like construction happening on these little streets, and I'm like, I'm trying not to cry, and I get to the, the front desk, and she's like, we don't have your reservation. And I said, well, I just booked it like 15 minutes ago, maybe it needs time to go through, and I booked it through um, like Priceline or Expedia or something like that. I wait a little bit, like 15, 20 minutes. I ca I'm calling my dad because uh, I had Wi-Fi in the hotel lobby and I just wanted to let him know what was happening. And I go back up to check if my reservation had popped up and she was like, no, we don't work with Priceline or Expedia or whatever. And I'm like, well then why was I able to pay like 500, 500 600, I don't even know how much money I like spent on on this hotel for a few days. And um, she's like, well, I think you need to call Priceline. I think it was Priceline. So I called Priceline, they're like, let me check in with them. They call the front desk, they're talking. He calls me back and he's like, I'm so sorry. They don't work with Priceline after all. Um, and I'm like, are you gonna take the, the hotel off? Like, that's so weird that I was able to book that. And he was like, yeah, that was our mistake. We'll give you 80 extra euros. Uh, because it was awful and I was like, okay, and then the lady at the front desk wasn't the friendliest I it was getting late. I hadn't eaten anything and I was like, well, I should give Madrid a shot So I booked two nights just to see if I liked it or not. I mean, I was already there I get to the hotel room It's fine. It's nothing crazy But at least I had somewhere to put my stuff and I could shower and I, it was like 6 p.m. at this point. I hadn't had anything to eat. I'm starving because I was dealing with this fiasco all day. I found this nice vegan restaurant nearby that I could walk to. I was like, okay, this is gonna be my treat to myself. I walk to the restaurant and I'm like, um, una mesa para uno, por favor. You know, I'm using like what I learned in Duolingo basically. And he was like, oh, we have a table, but um, you'll have to leave in like 45 minutes because it's reserved. And I was like, yeah, fine, I'll be quick, I'm starving. So I'm at this table, I'm ordering like a ton of stuff. And my waiter is like, are you sure? That's actually really big. I ordered a pizza, tacos, wine, and something else, I think. And um, I'm like, no, 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 yeah, this is great. I'm starving, I had such a crazy day today. He's bringing me my food, I'm eating everything, and then we get to talking, and I'm like, yeah, I had a crazy day today with my Airbnb, and they like kicked me out, and I had to find a hotel, and this is my first meal of the day. And he was so friendly, and, um, and he was like, well, you know, I actually get off, in, I get off work soon, um, could I have a glass of wine with you? And I said, yes, please. And so he comes up with a glass of wine and sits at my table. And I thought we were gonna go to a bar or something, but he sits down on my table and we we're just chatting, having wine. I was asking him about this bar that I wanted to check out. And he was like, well, you know, I do know of a barcade because I love, I love a barcade. He's like, would you, would you like to go? And I was like, I thought you would never ask. We go to this barcade, we're there for a little bit, watching people play games, and we go to another bar, and oh my God, we go to this like 
underground weed bar. We were walking around Madrid late at night and um, the side of this building that kind of just, it was kind of like reflective. It just looked like a, a wall or something. It was so strange, very secretive. It is so cool. There are like games everywhere. It's a little dark and moody and you can order food and have edibles or smoke weed or whatever and it's just like really big space so we went there for a little bit and it was so late at this point he was like well let me drop you back off at your hotel we take his um his moped and we're <laughs> he was driving like a maniac and i'm sitting on the back and you know it's like super late at night and, I, and it just hits me like, I'm in Spain. I'm with this really nice guy. You know, my waiter from tonight. I don't know, it was just, it was just so funny how it turned around so quickly. And I ended up seeing him again a couple of times after that and it was, it was lovely. That is my Madrid fiasco. It ended up being okay, but the beginning was so stressful and I was like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to make it here like five days or however long I was supposed to be there for. And I did. I ended up booking more stays at the hotel. I just stayed there. I didn't wanna, you know, do anything crazy. And it was, a, it was a really nice time. I feel like I met a lot of really lovely people and made new friends. And, um, and so I ended up having a really good time. And then I went back to Copenhagen and now I'm back in LA.